Hey folks, Roland Martin here. What's happening, Roland? Well, today is Friday. It's time for the Friday update. It's, uh, it's in fact, it's Good Friday. Uh, Good Friday at Easter's just around the corner. Here we are very appropriately at, at, at the store in Fort Myers, the Bass Pro Shop store. And I'll get into that in a second. But Good Friday, okay, Easter is coming up. Easter, by the way, in all the places that I've ever been, Santee Cooper, now I'm guiding on Headwaters, when I was a guide at Okeechobee, Easter was always the most premier week for bass fishing in, that I, I think I ever experienced. I caught more big fish this week or around Easter than any other time of the year. Anyway, we're here in front of the Bass Pro Shop, and it's fitting because I just got back from California, from Irving, California, and I was supposed to be out there with Johnny Morris to open this, a brand new store in Jimmy Houston. Unfortunately, Johnny got sick. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, uh, we went out to... The, the big store in Irving, California. And the first thing I did, I walked into the store and each store set up uh, so it kind of displays the indigenous wildlife of, uh, of all the flora and fauna of, of the area. So as I walked in the door, the first thing I saw up on the wall was this giant picture of myself and Johnny Morris sitting off of Catalina Island in a boat with a big striped marlin. We'd caught a, a big striped marlin together in 1976 on many of the trips that I've been out in California, but it was just kind of so representative because I'd forgot all about that picture. Now, people ask me all the time, they say, well, Roland, where's your favorite place to fish? Well, right now it's Headwaters because I'm really doing a great job catching all big trophy bass at Headwaters. But uh, before that, it was Santee Cooper. Uh, that was just a wonderful place back in the 70s. And of course, Okeechobee, when it was a alive and well and back in the 80s, there wasn't a better place to fish. But on occasion, I've been out to California and I've fished the, the place like the, the uh, California Sacramento River Delta. That's just phenomenal. That's just, just as good as any place. And I've also fished uh, there on Clear Lake, Clear Lake, California. I've just, I saw the biggest bass I've ever seen in my life. It was probably in the 16, 17 pound class. I didn't catch it, but I saw it. But anyway, in addition to that, my good friend Fred Ward out of Phoenix, Arizona has taken me all over the, the West and would fish a lot of big lakes in Mexico. And I've, I've caught so many big double-digit fish all out on the West Coast and Mexico that it's really been a real treat. But anyway, let's start off the week and let's talk about what happened uh, this this last week. And, uh, Sunday was the last day of the Bassmaster Classic. Well, Justin Hummer won it. Now, let me tell you about Justin Hummer. Back uh, when we had the Pan Am Games with my uh, granddaughter Hillary Martin and, of course, my son Scott, and uh, Scott and I were on one team. And Hillary Martin, who's now a freshman at the University of Alabama on the fishing team, paired up with Justin Hammer, Justin Hammer, who won the Bassmaster Classic this last week. Well, the thing about it, Justin at the time had said, you know, Roland, uh, gosh, it's hard, hard to make ends meet. There's $45,000 in entry fee. There's another $100,000 in expenses to fish the tournament. I'm kind of getting by, but I'm, I'm kind of running out of money. I need a big win. I need a big win. Well, he got the big win. Let me tell you, folks, he's a great fisherman, and he got the big win this last week. It won, a, I guess, about a half a million dollars totally from all the different things. Uh, winning the Bass Master Classic, that's going to do him just fine. He's going to have enough money to continue with the with his, the sport of professional fishing. Anyway, Jimmy and I left that next Sunday without Johnny because Johnny got sick. He had to go back to Springfield. He called us. He said, oh, I wish we could go down to southern Oklahoma. We had planned this whole big trip. And I got down there with Jimmy. Well, first of all, let me just tell you about Jimmy. Jimmy's competitor. When it comes time to, to fish any kind of place, particularly some of his local lakes around, around uh, southern Oklahoma, he's going to want to fish the front of the boat. Let me just explain a little bit about what we have in the front of the boat. Now, if you run the front of the boat like there, and, you're, and, and that's where Jimmy would be, he'd be in the front of the boat just like that. He'd be up here, and I'd be way back there, about 20 feet away. And guess what? Jimmy is going to go along, and he's a good caster. He's, he's one of the most accurate casters I've ever seen in my life. Jimmy is going to go along and systematically wipe out all the fish in front of the boat. He's going to throw at every tree. He's going to throw at every weed line. He's going to throw at every little swirl that he sees in the water. And he's going to catch three times more fish than you, unless you become... And you outcast him. Now, how you outcast Jimmy is kind of a nice deal. You outcast him with a long, long cast. See, Jimmy makes accurate little short casts, throws about 50 or 60 feet. That's his, that's his goal. What, what I had to do to beat him, and I, 
I didn't the first day. I let him kind of, kind of really kind of run the front of the boat. And he caught, I caught the big fish the first day. But that's beside the point. The second day, he kind of chided me. He said, Roland, you, I caught more fish than you did today. I said, that's not going to happen again, Jimmy, because I'm going to outcast you. And sure enough, that second day, I got to make a big, long 100-foot cast. I'd throw 10 or 15 foot past him. So every tree that he was getting ready to throw to, I'd throw in there first. Now, he, he kind of upset him. Man. That's beside the point. We're a big, big competition. But the, the only way, if, if you're a fish in a tournament, for example, and you let the guy in the front of the boat have the front of the boat, and it's like a, uh, it's just a shoreline there, and there's a lot of logs and a lot of uh, visible ambush points, you're going to get beat, unless you be really kind of aggressive. Now, I know in a lot of tournament formats, you can't cast up in front of the guy if it's a pro tournament. Uh, the pro has kind of the control of the front of the boat, and you're supposed to, as, a, as an angler or a... Uh, co-angler you're supposed to be throwing to the back of the boat kind of deal well that's that's not the case with jimmy and i jimmy and I, we're just trying to catch all the fish we can and sure enough that second day i i, I was really really aggressive i, I didn't I get behind them I, I got a little bit close maybe a little bit farther up in the front of the boat and and we also caught crappie though here's the thing about the lakes we fished they're full of timber and they're full of grass and they're full of big giant crappie the first couple i caught were a pound and a half to say a pound two and a quarter pounds so these are big crappie now 17 18 inches long 19 inches long just gigantic crappie and so we caught like eight of them i think i caught about four i think here we caught four anyway along with that we're using a little favorite rod and reel at least i was with 20 pound braid a little bitty crappie jig about that big a little curly tail would flip it in by a tree or flip it in by the edge of a grass bed where it dropped off in a 10 or 15 foot of water and you just watch the line be a line watcher and sure enough there'd be a little tick dunk. and half the time they were bass half the time we caught actually 15 or 20 bass and uh and that was that was kind of part of the game just catching bass but it was on a on a crappie jig now the other part of the day we we uh, fished up uh, the old cinco worms and actually uh i'm, I'm working now with uh, a lot of people at the at lucky strike and lucky strike makes this red man spinnerbait for jimmy and it's it's, it's about a 50-year-old spinnerbait that he's had for years and years and years. And why I like it, particularly in the gold blade for down here in Florida, is that it's heavy. It's a half ounce, and it casts like a bullet. It just goes so far. It's just, it just it's accurate, and it goes through the air. And when you reach, retrieve it fast, for you to think, think about <coughs> the Red Man spinnerbait, is it stays upright. This number four blade, in this case a gold blade, spins, and just it just runs just so perfect. It's just a terrific spinnerbait. Anyway, along with that, we have these, these, uh, these, these. I guess they call them. It's not a cinco worm. It's a, it's a sick sink worm. Anyway, it's a, it's a lucky crap. It's a lucky strike worm. And it, and and I was making long casts with that. And how we do that? We just rig it with a four rod EWG uh, hook, seventeen pound test line, make a long cast again. And what we're looking for with polarized glasses. Hey folks, come on by. What we're looking for with polarized glasses is a is the weed line. We're actually throwing in little holes in the grass, and there's bass are in there to free spawn. And so, uh, with the right polarized glasses, you can actually see the dark spots. You want to get your worm down in those dark holes, and that's kind of what we were doing. You notice it's a bluebird day today. There's not a cloud in the sky. An old friend of mine, Glenn Lau, used to say, "Every day is a holiday when the skies are baby blue." <laughs> well, it's kind of a baby blue day today, and because of that, you're going to have to fish the shady areas. You're gonna have to look. You can see bass have non-eyelidded eyes. I got sunglasses on. I can I can handle it. But bass don't have sunglasses, <laughs> and they they because of these bright sunny days, they're gonna be in the shade. They're gonna be underneath the log, behind a tree, behind a bush, underneath the boat dock, in a in a crevice in the grass, someplace out of the way of the sun. They just won't be in the direct sunlight. So when you make your cast, try to find a shady spot. That's kind of that's kind of the tip for today. Find a shady spot on a sunny day. Now, also with uh, with the Easter on like this is is this is the spawning season, and the, the most important thing about fishing. I'm a pattern fisherman, and I and so I, I I look for that exact set of water and cover conditions that attract fish to that particular spot and other spots. Well, in doing so, I'm looking for the warmest water. I'm looking for the right bottom for them to spawn on, and I'm looking for a. Uh, uh, I'm looking for that perfect water temperature. Now, bass like to spawn at 62 degrees and higher. And here in Florida, so many of the bass are 70, 72 degrees, and that's really kind of the best deal. 
But anyway, here we are in uh, in at the Bass Pro Shop, and it's just it's just been a great experience being here. Uh, I just wish Johnny had fished with us this this last couple of days. We Jimmy and I caught just hundreds of fish. And again, I want to give a con congratulatory shout to Justin Hammer and his his great win on the Bassmaster. Uh, the, the, well, the classic, the Bassmaster Classic. It's it's the one title that I I avoided uh, winning. I, I won Angler of the Years and I won plenty of other national titles, but I never won the Bassmaster Classic. Kind of unfinished business. That's what my son's up to right now. So maybe he's going to win it for me. And in the meantime, hey, thanks for watching. And listen, my my, my advertisers like uh, the the Superstart Batteries and the Shell Rotilla, of course, O'Reilly Store, uh, Bass Pro Shop. All these people, you know, Spiker Corporation. My frog talk people, all these people really enjoy when my YouTube videos and they like you watching, but they also like to have you hit that likes button and, and also subscribe while you're at it. So I hope, I hope I've told you a few things about what's happening this week, the great fishing we had, the great store opening we had in California. <coughs> and if you would, hit the likes button. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.